Thank you so much, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I'm happy to see your face in Lagos again. We've been up, down, right, left, front, back, everywhere. And now, Lagos time. And what a subject we're talking about. Emmanuel. Somebody shout, Emmanuel. Today, tomorrow, next day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I know you'll be there. I will be here. And then for the retreat session, Emmanuel. We cannot exhaust everything heaven has revealed concerning Emmanuel. And as you come, as you participate, the mighty God will visit you. Great, unforgettable, unprecedented miracles will happen in your life, happen in your family. Happen all around you. Yeah. And we pray that this will be like 2021, beyond 2021, unforgettable in every life. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and glorify your name. What a great, a good, a gracious God you are. You brought us to this point. We thank you for everyone here. I will thank you for all the GCK locations everywhere all over the world. We're asking that from tonight, you glorify yourself in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Be that Emmanuel in every life, yeah. in every family. Yeah. Touch all spirit, soul, and body. And roll away all the problems we are brought in Jesus' name. Yeah. We well, thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. You can shout a better amen than that. Yeah. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Matthew chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son. It is not a man talking, it is an angel that appeared unto Joseph and revealed unto Joseph what was in Mary's womb. And then the angel said, She, Mary, the virgin, that never knew a man, before this event took place, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save, shall rescue, shall set his people free from their sins. In verse 22, it says in verse 22, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the, uh, of the Lord by the prophet saying verse 23 behold a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name everybody Emmanuel which being interpreted is God's with us God the creator with us God the divine owner of the whole universe is with us God the miracle working God the mighty powerful God God with us is with us to save with us to redeem with us to heal, God with us to deliver, deliver us from every challenge, every problem this world has been, has brought upon us. And as you bring your mind, 
your soul, your spirit, everything you are, you bring to the Lord at this time. God will be with you. The Savior will be with you. The Redeemer will be with you. The Healer, the Deliverer will be with you in a practical, definite way in Jesus' name. Now it says that it might be fulfilled, which had been spoken by the prophet. Where does Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14? Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel this is coming from heaven this is the prophecy that had been given at the time of Isaiah, 700 years before Christ came into this world, he assures us that the one coming, the Savior, the Healer, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, that the one coming will set us free from everything the fall of Adam and Eve brought into the world. Isaiah chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 6. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from the Lord of hosts. And he will, the Lord of hosts will perform this. Performance is coming in your life. Yeah. He will manifest himself. Tonight we're looking at the message, Emmanuel, the mighty God with us. Emmanuel, the mighty God with us. He has remembered us. As I remember the whole world, when the world was languishing in something that the world could not deliver herself from, then the God of heaven, the everlasting God, the eternal God, the creator of the whole earth, in his mercy, in his compassion, in his love, is sent his only begotten son. And that only begotten son is Emmanuel, the mighty God with us tonight. As we listen to the message, always remember with you is Emmanuel, the mighty God. And when we pray for salvation, Emmanuel, the mighty God, he will save you. And when we pray for healing, Emmanuel, the mighty God, will heal you. And whatever yoke may be in your life, tonight, Emmanuel, the mighty God, will break Shatter every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Emmanuel, the mighty God with us. Three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, the prophecy. Number two, the purpose. Number three, the privilege, our privilege. Number one, is the purpose concerning the coming of Emmanuel. Eventually he came. He came to this world and he lived a perfect, sinless, spotless, and holy life. And then he died for us on the cross of Calvary. And everything he came to do is now available for you and for me. So that we can benefit from the coming, the arrival of Emmanuel. Number one, the prophecy concerning the coming of Emmanuel. Number two, what did he come? Because if God does anything, he has a purpose, he has a reason, an eternal reason. 
a real sin that still subsists today, that continues till today. What's the reason number two? And the purpose clarified in the coming of Emmanuel, God himself. Clarified why he sent Jesus Christ. And the Lord himself also clarified why he came. The purpose clarified in the coming of Emmanuel. Number three is the privilege you have, the privilege I have. It's the privilege that's available for the whole world, available for every generation of the people that live in the world. The privilege confirmed through conversion by this emancipator. Look at number one. Number one, is the prophecy concerning the coming of Emmanuel. The prophecy concerning the coming of Emmanuel. It tells us, once again, look at that in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is coming from the Lord himself from high heaven to the lowest earth. This is coming from the God who had given us the promise in the time of the fall of man that it will reverse everything the fall of man has done, that it will cancel in your life, in my life, in every life, every life of those who come to him and believe that it will cancel the negative effect of the fall on the life of everyone. This is coming from the Lord. And everything that comes to you today that you hear is coming from the Lord. Because the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. A virgin shall conceive. Here is what the Lord has planned. It's unique. Never happened to any other person did not even happen to uh, Eve, not to Sarah, not to any woman in the world, not knowing uh, a man, but all by herself, without any interaction or intercourse with a man. A virgin shall conceive miraculously. A virgin shall conceive supernaturally. A virgin shall conceive without the age of man or any other person on earth. He shall conceive and bear a son. The son that, will, that has come to save. The son that has come to deliver. He will bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Where is this promise coming from? Where is this prophecy coming from? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. After Adam and Eve had disobeyed the Lord, after they ate the forbidden fruit, after they rebelled against the Lord, the God of heaven, after they sold themselves unto Satan. Then the curse came and immediately because of the curse of that disobedience, because of the repercussion of that rebellion, because of the evil that came from Satan to them and through them to the world, the Lord God of heaven promised that the Redeemer will come, that the Savior will come, that the one that will get us, that will break that fallenness in man. He gave the promise immediately. That's in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I, God is talking now, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed her seed. That's the seed of that woman that is without knowing any man. Because if she knows a man and then has a child, that will be the seed of the man. But without any interaction, 
any kind of connection with a man has seed. And when he comes, what will he do? It shall bruise thy head. When Christ comes, and Christ has come. I say Christ has come. Is that Emmanuel? Is the son of the virgin that will bruise the head of the serpent, the head of the devil, and the head of Satan. And in your life, as you allow Emmanuel to come in your life today, it will bruise the head of the devil from your life in Jesus' name. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Thou shalt bruise his heel. You know what that is funny to that's, that's crucifixion right there. That he, they will pierce his feet and he'll, he'll hang on the cross for you and for me. And because Christ had done that already, that his feet had been bruised, had been pierced, and he had died on the cross. Now is the time for you to realize the hedge of the devil is broken, brutalized, bruised, destroyed from your life in Jesus name and look at Luke chapter 1 verse 31 here the angel is still speaking about when Christ will come and when Christ comes what he will do in Luke chapter 1 verse 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb here is angel Gabriel talking to Mary and Mary had not known any man here is the prophecy that still continues and it says behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name tell me Jesus say that word Jesus the angel said said ye to Joseph in Matthew and now says it uh, to Mary the virgin in Luke it says shall call his name Jesus look at verse 32 in verse 32 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Then in verse 33, it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It will come into your life today. Yeah. It will rule in your life today, from today, forever in Jesus' name. Yeah. It will reign in your heart. Yeah. Reign in your soul. Reign over every area of your life in Jesus' name. It says, It will reign in the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. His rulership, his reign over your life, over your family will never end. And eventually when he comes to reign over Israel as a nation, that reign will com continue forever. And then when he sets up his millennial reign, he will reign over the whole earth. And then from that millennium forever and ever in Jesus' name. But you have the privilege that from today, he can begin the reign in your life. And where Christ reigns, where Christ is present, evil will vanish away. Sin will vanish away. And all the consequences of sin will vanish away from your life in Jesus' name. Verse 34. <clears throat> then said Mary, unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. I know not a man that proves that he was, she was a virgin. I know not a man. And that's what I said the prophet had said. And that's what Genesis had said. And that who comes out of her will be the siege of the woman. And now she herself said that she knew not a man. How will this great miracle 
the miracle of the ages that a virgin shall conceive and the son that comes forth shall be the son of the highest how shall that happen look at verse 35 in verse 35 the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee and therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god the son of god the son of god that's why when you receive him you receive him as the son of god and the miracle of conversion the miracle of transformation the miracle of a change that nobody can do in your life that miracle will come in jesus name salvation will come in that salvation there's freedom from sin there's a forgiveness of sin and there's a total deliverance from all the chains of the sin that bound you in the past his conception was a miracle his birth was a miracle and when it comes to your life what he does in your life the salvation the healing is a miracle and then he sustains you to keep on living living the righteous life by the presence and the power of the son of god in you and that too is a miracle and then when you come to the end of life and you say so you live here you go to heaven that's a miracle too and when resurrection takes place and the dead shall rise and those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them that's a miracle to you from the miracle of of of, uh, of his conception the miracle of his birth the miracle of his life the miracle of his uh, reconciliation a reconciliation with god and the miracle of righteousness in your life miracles will never stop in jesus name in verse 36 it tells us and behold thy cousin elizabeth she she, ha she has also conceived a son in her old age and uh, this is the sixth month uh, with her who was called barren then in verse 37 verse 37 for with god nothing shall be impossible with God, nothing shall be impossible. The virgin birth with God, nothing shall be impossible. A virgin not knowing a man and then conceiving by the Holy Ghost and bringing forth a son and we call his name Jesus because with God, nothing shall be impossible. The people who do not believe in the virgin birth birth they're saying because it never happened in any biological way before they cannot believe that they forget that with god nothing shall be impossible the people that do not believe that a virgin will conceive and bring forth a son they are unbelievers because they don't believe they do not believe that with god nothing shall be impossible and that jesus lived the perfect sinless life the people who do not believe that are unbelievers but because they do not realize with God nothing shall be impossible the people do not believe that we can live a holy life a righteous life once we are reconciled with God and he lives within us the people who do not believe that the presence of Christ in us can make us live a righteous life they do not believe that with God nothing shall be impossible the people do not believe that Jesus Christ in us will heal us will deliver us will work a miracle in our life they are unbelievers because you know why for when they do not believe that with God nothing shall be impossible I believe the virgin birth say that I believe the virgin birth let me hear you because I, because I believe with God, with God. nothing shall be impossible. I believe in the miracles of Christ I because, I because I believe 
with God nothing shall be impossible I believe it will make me live a victorious life because I believe with God nothing shall be impossible I believe in miracles today because I believe with God nothing shall be impossible Confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at it. We're looking at it. Luke chapter 24, and I'm reading from verse 44. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. It was written concerning him that a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and you'll call his name Emmanuel. He said all things written in the book of Moses or read Genesis that's uh, written by Moses and in the prophets were written Isaiah that's written in the prophets that everything reaching concerning him will be fulfilled and thank God it has been fulfilled and as a fulfillment to date you in your life in Jesus name in verse 45 and then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures amen, amen. we're well, looking at number two now number two why did he come why was he born why did Emmanuel come here the purpose clarified in the coming of Emmanuel the purpose clarified in the coming of Emmanuel look at this Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus here is the purpose for he shall save his people from their sins he the savior he the lord he jesus he emmanuel shall save his people from their sins their sins everyone in this world has his or her own sins because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You might not have the sin of Mr. A or Mrs. B. But you have your own sins. And those sins will hinder you from getting to the presence of God forever and ever. That's why one sin came into the life of Adam and Eve. They were driven away from the garden of Eden because no sin, no sinner will be allowed to remain, abide in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. And if we're going to be in the presence of the Lord forever, we must be saved from our sins and it's only Jesus Christ who can do that because the father has given Jesus to us as savior it's not just coming to religious gathering there are many people that come to religious gathering and uh, they're not saved they're not rescued they're not forgiven they're not set free from their sin. What Christ has come to do is not to make us religious. What Christ has come to do is to make us righteous. Is to save us. He takes sin out of us and he takes us out of sin. That's what he has come to do. That's what Christ will do for you tonight. He'll take every sin you have committed. The common sin. The uncommon sin. The visible sin, the secret sin, the habitual sin, 
everything you have been doing and you now do them unconsciously you just do them but a sin against god is rebellion against god and thank god you are here because today is that glorious day when jesus will take sin from you and it will take you from sin and then there will be a separation that sin will not have authority or dominion over your life anymore in jesus name and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Look at verse 22. In verse 22 it says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us he reconciles us with God he's the son of God he holds the hand of God he's also the son of man he holds the son of man and he brings those two hands together and it brings your heart to the heart of God. And it brings your person, your personality to the person of the almighty God. Because now he is God with us. And he comes to live inside us. And that's what he wants to do for you. That's the meaning of Emmanuel. When he said, behold, I stand at your door. And I'm knocking at your door. And if anyone will open the door... I will come in. That's God, the forgiver. That's God, the savior. That's God, the redeemer. That's God, the one that has come to set us free. And he says, he will come and live in you. And then he'll be talking to you. He'll be guiding you. He'll be protecting you. He'll be providing everything spiritual, everything physical, everything natural, everything heavenly in your life. God with us. God in us. God uh, for us is supporting us all the time that's why after you are saved Emmanuel with you Emmanuel in you Emmanuel for you he continues to supply grace grace that will make you to live a victorious life we're told in first John chapter 3 reading from verse 5 in first John chapter 3 from verse 5 and ye know that he was manifested to take away I was see that the purpose right there. He came to take away our sins and in him is no sin you see the people that struggle by themselves they take away okay that one will let me in jail i stop that that one will make my wife angry i will stop that that one will break my home i stop that and then all the others how can you how can you empty the ocean a cup at a time a glass of water you cannot do that that's why the people who try to take away their own sin one by one by one by one they cannot succeed only christ because his savior only christ because his redeemer is able to take all the sins away from your soul from your mind from your inner from your uh, from your intellect and from your habit is able to take everything away when you surrender yourself to him completely and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins all of them completely he bundles them together and he takes everything away and he sets us free 
If that has not happened, that's why you are here. That's why God has not allowed you to die before this time. Because if you died in your sin without giving him the chance to take away all your sin, you'll be on the other side, darkness forever and ever, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. But because... He wants you saved. And because he wants you to experience Emmanuel, that's why he has left you here. And that's why you are here for this GCK. At the end of the year like this, it will favor you with salvation in Jesus' name. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin look at verse 6 in verse 6 whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever abideth in him you abide in him he abides in you and when he lives within you every day every moment he strengthens you every moment he reminds you i came i didn't come here jesus is saying i didn't come just to make you religious i came to make you righteous and if you abide in me and my word abides in you and i abide in you you will not continue sinning habitually whoso Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, 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 has not seen him, neither known him. You know, the, that's why we know that you know, going to church does not solve the problem because there are people that go to church every Sunday and they can boast and say, I never missed any church service this year, and yet they're still sinning. They have not known him. They have not seen him. They're still telling their lies. The lies they told in January. They're still telling lies in December. They're still full of deception and the loss of the flesh. And they think an anger has not left them. Fighting has not led them. All those evil things from January to December has followed them. Although they keep on going to church, but tonight things will change your life Emmanuel will come in and when Emmanuel comes in and he abides in you your life will be transformed everything will change in Jesus name uh, look, at, look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness that's it that's it he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous look at verse 8 in verse 8 he that committeth sin tell me tell me why does it say that because sin does not originate from god Sin does not originate with Christ. Sin does not originate from the Holy Spirit. So, if anybody is found or seen, I will say, where did you get this? He cannot say, the sin, I got it from God. No, sin does not come from God. Where did you get this? I got this from Jesus. Sin does not originate from Jesus. Wickedness. Cruelty, killing other people, that cannot originate from Jesus. God is love, and that cannot originate from the Holy Spirit. Look at the deception in that person's life. It's always telling lies. He's been in church for 30 years, and yet he's still telling lies, and lying is sin. And Satan is a liar and the father of age. It, lying does not originate from the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of truth. And so, anyone that is still continuing 
sinner in sin and nursing sin and raising up sin and transmitting sin and distributing sin to other people's life is of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning, from the very beginning when he went to Adam and Eve. From the very beginning, when he went to deceive Adam and Eve, he had been a rebel, he had been a sinner before that time, and then it continues today, for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose. Look at that. For this purpose, if you have any other purpose for coming, God does not approve of that. This is the purpose for which Emmanuel came, for which Jesus Christ came, for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Somebody will shout amen from there. For this purpose now, if in your life, the works of the devil are just raging and raining. You have not fulfilled the purpose why Christ came. Sin there, adultery there, fornication there, fleshly work, fleshly attraction there. You have not fulfilled the purpose why Christ came. Wickedness and cruelty there. You have not fulfilled the purpose why Christ came. Satanism, devil worship, still there. And you're still in the cult. And you're doing all those things in the secret that you depend on the powers of darkness. The purpose of Christ coming has not been fulfilled. Examine your heart. Examine your life. And look at yourself if Christ came today if the work of the devil is still there and the sin and the consequence of sin is still there my friend you will not live with God eternally it's only the salvation of Christ that comes to us and this change has come for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil amen and then in verse 9 it says whosoever is born of God does not commit sin the Bible is very clear. Anybody can say, I'm a child of God. Hold on. Are you still telling lies? I'm a child of God. Are you still getting angry and fighting? I'm a child of God. Are you still, um, you know, violent in your family? Husband to wife and wife to husband. I'm a child of God. Are you still stealing? I'm a child of God. Are you still doing evil? No, that testimony is not acceptable in heaven when you're born again and when you give your life to the Lord whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God born of God where are you born of God I say where are you it will happen in Jesus name and look at Hebrews chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 25 Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost he is able remember with God nothing shall be impossible with God all this what talking about salvation is possible transformation of life with God all that is possible conversion total conversion all that is possible you allow him to enter your heart enter into your life and he makes a change he makes a turning around and there's no habitual sin anymore there's no common sin anymore. There's no secret sin anymore. You're not living righteous because somebody is watching me, because somebody is looking at me, because Christ lives in you. Emmanuel has come to save you. That's why you are living right, because he calls you not to religion, but to righteousness. Where he says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God. 
God by him seen he ever live to make intercession for them look at verse 26 in verse 26 for such an high priest became us who is holy that's his life harmless that's his life undefiled that's his life separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens and when he comes into our lives that's what he does in our lives he makes us like himself that's the purpose of his coming he makes us holy he makes us harmless he makes us undefiled he makes us separate from sinners and he then takes us to sit with him in heavenly places look at titus chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 11 titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men when the grace of god comes it appears to you it comes to you he says I am grace. Can I enter? I'm the grace of God. Can I turn your life around? And if you allow him, you allow the grace of God in your life, salvation will come. Forgiveness will come. Freedom will come. Transformation will come. A change of life will come. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12. In verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness will deny ungodliness we deny re uh, rebelliousness or uh, rebellion we deny every sin of the world and worldly laws and fleshly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world some people say when i get to heaven i'll be holy uh -uh. if you are not truly really here you'll not get to heaven some people say when i get to heaven my life will be free no if you're not free here you'll not get to heaven it says in this present world we live soberly and we live righteously and we live godly it will happen in jesus name that's why emmanuel came the purpose of the coming of Emmanuel. That purpose is now clarified and it tells us in verse 13, verse 13 says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 14, in verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity he doesn't want any iniquity any transgression any sin any wrongdoing to remain in our lives the purpose why he came and we call him emmanuel is that he is with us god with us and god will not be with sinners god will not approve of sinners god will not live in the sinner he saves us from all iniquity he redeems us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works we'll come to number three here number three is the privilege confirmed through conversion by this emancipator the our emmanuel is the emancipator that's why he came and thank god tonight is coming to you it will reach you there it will touch you right there and everything you couldn't do by yourself the lord will break the chain in your life he'll break that bad habit in your life he'll break that evil propensity in your life always leaning towards evil leaning towards evil always at the edge of sinning always at the edge of committing that sin and uh, you know eventually you, you know you are sorrowful you are sad you say what what came on me why am i doing this christ has come i said christ has come it will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. And look at look at what we need to do because we have this 
privilege. We have this opportunity that Emmanuel came. And what he came to do is still available for you and for me and for everyone today. But we need to, we need to show that we want, we desire, we want to have what he has brought. And in your life, as you show the desire and you look towards sin and you turn away from that sin that nailed him to the cross it will turn your life around and change your life tonight in Jesus name in Acts of the Apostle chapter 3 verse 19 repent ye therefore repent ye therefore what does that mean it means quit all those uh, places of sin quit all that habit of sin quit all that uh, you know tendency of you you used to enjoy fleshly things quit repent ye therefore turn away therefore all those sins that you know that god hates and he has written a lot about that in his word all the things he says will bring judgment will bring condemnation will bring damnation he says we turn away from them repent ye therefore and be converted and be converted when a person is converted it's not like it used to be she's not like she used to be life becomes different life in the public life in the private everything becomes totally different repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out that's what he does when he sees that you repent when he sees that you turn away when you see that you want that salvation you want that redemption when you see that you want to fulfill the purpose for why jesus came and you turn away from them and you are converted he says He'll blot out your sins. And then it says, The times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The time of refreshing, the time of renewal, the time of regeneration. A total change will come. Praise the Lord. It will come tonight. Amen. I said it will come tonight. Christ never appears in any place empty-handed that you just okay i come into you and then there's no change never i come into you and there's no transformation never i come into you and there's no conversion never if truly christ comes anywhere in any heart in any life there must be conversion there must be transformation there must be a new life it says the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord look at verse 26 in verse 26 it tells us unto you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you he will bless you Amen. i said he will bless you Amen. and i say unto you god bless you Amen. emmanuel bless you Jesus bless you tonight in Jesus name the beginning of that blessing look at that in turning away every one of you from his iniquities that's the first blessing it's coming I said it's coming it'll turn you away from all your iniquities it'll turn you away from all your infirmities every sickness Every oppression, every depression, every suffering disease, he'll turn you away from them. He'll turn you away from your iniquity. He'll turn you away from your infirmity. He'll turn you away from your impossibility. Everything you have found impossible until tonight, from tonight, as Jesus enters afresh and enters anew, impossibilities will be made possible. Yeah. You know, we've been knocking at the doors and the doors have not been opened tonight. The doors will open in Jesus' name. Yeah. Because Christ comes and he turns you away from all your iniquities, all your infirmities, and all your impossibility in Jesus' name. Yeah. Will you let him do it? 
Look at Acts chapter 15, verse 3. Acts chapter 15, verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. Uh, Paul and Barnabas had gone to the Gentile world and he spoke to them about Jesus who has come to save us and they dropped all their idols and it dropped all their fetishes and it dropped all their waistbands and it dropped all their sinful practices and it dropped all their bottles of alcohol and it dropped all their marijuana all their cigarettes and it dropped all those things that the gentiles normally took and now they knew that a change had come upon the gentiles and that is the change christ wants to effect in every life declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and it caused great joy unto all the brethren. Joy in your life today. The joy of salvation. The joy of conversion. The joy of transformation and the joy of your healing miracle in Jesus name. Look at James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. Uh, there are times some people denew the Lord before and they were saved before and in a time of temptation, in the time of trial in a time of you know the devil using men and women in the world to present something to them they fall from their steadfastness they fall from their commitment to the Lord they fall from their profession of faith, they become backsliders, you know the Lord also want to walk redemption and walk transformation and walk conversion in your life too that's why it says in james chapter 5 verse 19 brethren if any of you any brother any sister brethren if any of you do err from the truth gone away from the truth astray from the truth and one convert him the backslider needs conversion the backslider needs transformation the backslider needs the grace of God to come to your life again brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him one convert him uh, that goes astray that is backslidden look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says let him know that he which converts the sinner one of you a believer before but has gone now back into sin a backslider is now referred to as a sinner a sinner is a sinner a church sinner a worldly sinner a sinner that you know reads the bible the sinner that does not read the bible a sinner is a sinner let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death if the backslider is not restored if the backslider is not converted again if the backslider is not transformed you'll face eternal death but it is when you come to the lord you realize where you have been you realize what you've been doing and you realize that you're forsaking the faith and you're forsaking the stand and the life of righteousness now you come back he shall save him from the error of his way and he shall he shall hide a multitude of sins all those sins that you have committed everything will be hidden away from the judgment day in Jesus name tonight is that night that your life will save you your life will restore you in your life he will he will transform you and new life will come grace of God will come and then you begin to live now in the righteousness of Christ in Jesus name we're looking at Psalm 51 and I'm reading from verse 5 Psalm 51 verse 5 behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me verse 6 verse 6 is 
behold thou desirest truth in the inward part that, that that's the desire of the lord he desires truth in the inward part in your heart of heart at the bottom of your heart in your inner nature he desires truth he doesn't want self-deception deceiving yourself that you know you're in christ when you're living in sin living in sin and living in christ they're two separate things when you live in christ you'll not live in sin when you're living in sin you're not living in christ he wants truth in the inward path he doesn't want hatred hidden in the heart adultery hidden in the heart and he doesn't want fornication hidden in the heart it doesn't want a fraud hidden in the heart it doesn't want a drunkenness hidden in the heart it wants truth he wants new life hidden in your heart behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom look at verse 7 in verse 7 purge me with his soap and I shall be clean tonight I'll purge you it will cleanse you. It will wash you and make you ready to be in the very presence of God in Jesus' name. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. Amen. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He doesn't want you to say, well, I'm, I'm washed moderately. And that's enough. No, he said that's not enough. He wants to so wash you tonight, your soul your mind, your thoughts, your inner life, until you are whiter than snow. Can he do it? Can he do it? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he tells us, Create in me a clean heart, O God. That's what he does when Emmanuel comes in, God with us. God in his righteousness. God with his redemption. God has were reconciled to him. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit spirit within me look at verse look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation salvation has joy sin has sadness has sorrow has suffering when somebody goes into sin no matter how small your conscience pricks you and says if that holiness, if your pastor were here, would you do that? If your Christian friends were here looking at you, will you do that? Sin has sadness. Sin has sorrow. Sin has suffering. And if somebody does not repent here, it will be sadness and sorrow and suffering forever and ever. But when we're saved, we come to the Lord, we open our hearts before the Lord, and we say, come in today, and come in to stay, and come in forever. Salvation will bring joy. Re a reconciliation with God will bring joy. All the sorrow, the condemnation is taken away, and then he gives you the joy of salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. He will do it. I said he will do it. And look at verse 13. So verse 13 says, Then after I have the joy of salvation, then after I have that gladness of the gospel walking thoroughly in me, then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And you know, it's a waste of time. It's more than a waste of time uh, trying to, you know, tell others to come to Christ when you are out Outside Christ telling others about salvation because you know the theory in the head but you don't have the practical experience in your soul and telling other people pray tell other people seek the Lord tell other people repent telling other people come to the Lord when you yourself when you don't have the joy of that salvation it says restore unto me 
the joy of your salvation. And then he says, after that, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. Emmanuel has come. Our Savior has come. Our Redeemer has come. Our Healer has come. Amen. Amen. And because he has come, he has come to you today. And he says, everything that brings condemnation, I'm going to wipe out of your life. Everything that brings bondage, bondage to sin, bondage to iniquity, I'm going to break every bondage and every yoke in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And then he'll set you free. Free from sin. Free from sickness and free from satanic affliction. Tonight is my night. I said tonight is my night. He will do it and nothing will hinder him in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. Make it a real, real deal with the Lord today. Don't allow the coming of Emmanuel, the purpose of the coming of Emmanuel, don't allow that to be wasted in your life. And receive him in your heart, in your life, repent and be converted. Turn away, turn away. Turn away from all your sin and then say, Savior, come, come into me. And it will come. And a change will happen in your life. It's bowed and I is closed. You want Him, Christ, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us to come in in a definite way tonight to come in in a powerful way tonight and forgive you and cleanse you and change your life and save you and break the power of sin away from your life wherever you are raise up your hand his savior his redeemer if the Son of God who comes to reconcile the sons of men with the God of heaven. Raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Online, anywhere you are, this is your chance and this is your moment. Raise up your hand and stand up wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Salvation will come in. A change will come in. If you're backsliding and you know backslider is the one that has gone back to the scene that she was free from before, he was free from before, and you realize that and you're saying, Lord, I come back. I want this joy of salvation. I don't want the sorrow of, you know, committed sins following me, following me all my days. I want to make this day the day of coming back to God, total reconciliation with God, a change in my life. Anywhere you are, you raise up your hand and you stand up. And you are saying, oh Lord, I come. You mean that from the depth of your heart. You mean that with all sincerity. And all the sins that had separated you from the Lord, you confess, you forsake, and you say, Jesus Emmanuel coming and he will come in. He will come in. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation has come now. Joy of salvation will follow. Freedom will follow. Redemption, total redemption will follow. The Lord is waiting for you. Don't hide. Remain in sin until you die. There will be nowhere to hide on that final day. Call upon the Lord while you are standing and say, Lord, here I come. I don't want to play religion. I want righteousness. The righteousness of Christ in me. 
believe and I will save you. Actually save you. Rescue you from sin. Take sin from you and take you from sin. That's why he came. It doesn't patch up. It doesn't cover. It doesn't just pet you in sin. It preserves you from sin. We're going to pray together and I'll keep on standing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for Emmanuel. We thank you because he is Savior. We thank you because he is Lord. We thank you because when he comes in, he actually saves us from sin. And I pray for all these who sincerely are giving themselves over to you. Save them by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Cleanse them. Wash them. Make them as white as snow. Make them whiter than snow. Let that real walk of redemption, taking us away from sin, taking sin away from us, let it happen in every one of their lives right now in Jesus' name. And let your spirit be a witness with their heart that they are now children of God, born again, born anew, born afresh, and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Confirm me to Lord in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors will be with you there very soon. And uh, our moderator will uh, help us handle this. And then after that, save from iniquity. He'll save us and heal us from all our infirmities in Jesus' name. He'll also save us from all the impossibilities in our lives. I'll come back to do that. Uh, don't sit down yet. Um, respond to those uh, counselors as our moderator takes over now. I say congratulations to all of you who have just responded to the call unto salvation. The angels of God are rejoicing. God the Father is rejoicing. God the Son is rejoicing. The Holy Spirit is rejoicing. And our Father in the Lord is also happy that you have responded to the call of God today. I welcome you again. And God will make this experience of your permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Make sure that you respond to the questions that are stated in that slip. Fill it properly. Write in capital letters so that we will be able to help you further. And those of you who are online, please look at the screen, your, 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 your iPad, your notebook, your computer. You see a, a, a link there. Please click that link and also fill the form that is there. It is gckq dot org slash connect gckhq dot org slash connect can I fill the form appropriately and submit then we'll be able to help you further our counselors please attend to them on time and counselors make sure that every detail called for is properly filled the names are clear enough for us to see. The addresses are legitimately written. The telephone numbers, the 11 digits are complete. Please take note of all that so that you'll be able to help these our brothers and sisters who are coming to the Lord, coming to the family. You'll be able to help them further. If you are not be attended to, please just raise up your hand as you are standing. Our counselors will reach out to you wherever you are. And those of you who are giving your life to the Lord, and you are the half our location or other locations all over the world, we are going to have the believers launch for you tomorrow at two o'clock. Two o'clock. 
and that will be in the hall for those of us at the other location. It will be in the hall where we are going to have the retreat. At two o'clock, we are going to have the believers lunch with you, lunch out with you. Please be there. We may announce tomorrow, but please make up your mind to be there by two o'clock. And those of us in other other locations, you'll be told where you are to meet tomorrow in your various locations. Cancel us, let it be fast. And those of you in the other locations, don't miss the blessings of God today. Wait and receive the touch of the Almighty God. Wait and receive your own miracle. Wait and receive the power of God to your life. Let God roll away all those bodies, all those problems, all those sicknesses, all those diseases. Because our pastor, our father in the Lord, is he going to pray for every one of us. There is a blessing of God awaiting you tonight. And you are going to receive your own. I say you are going to receive your own. Cancel us, let me fast. Remember, write your name correctly and cancel us. Make sure that all those details are properly filled. And those of us online, don't forget, please connect to gckhq.org slash connect. And then you see the form there. As soon as you feel submit, and then you'll be able to get in touch with you thereafter. Cancel let's be fast, be fast. And I are sitting down. Be praying, be telling God, tonight you must visit me. Tonight, don't pass me by. Tonight, I want to have a miracle. Tonight, I want to be the first person to testify to the power of the Almighty God. Start to connect with God. Start to call upon the Lord where you are sitting down. And those of us who are watching us over the television, who are listening to us over the radio, those of us who are also watching through other means, through transmission, we pray. I tell God, I must receive my home tonight. Those, I say again, those of us who are just be saved, and you are watching us all night. Don't forget. Please. Just connect to gck.hq.org stroke connect. Cancel just have two minutes more. Please be fast, be fast, be fast. Counselor, please make sure you submit your sleeves to your supervisors tonight. Submit those forms to the supervisors. Don't go with anyone because you need to start to reach out to them tonight. Be expectant tonight. 
Tonight will be different in your life. Tonight, I said tonight, tonight is your day. A day you never forget. The man of God is coming up, coming up now to shower the blessing of God upon your life. To use the authority of God to run away the problem of your life. Be a spent time tonight, tonight, you will sing for joy. Amen. Remember the purpose for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might tell me. Tell me aloud. Tell me what will happen in your life. Sickness is a work of the devil. Cancer is a work of the devil. Paralysis is a work of the devil. And blindness, work of the devil. And all those uh, suicidal thoughts, I'm dying, I'm going to die. Is that the work of God? No. Work of who? Yes. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested and is manifested to you tonight. Yes. In your life tonight. Yes. Right in your presence there tonight. That he might destroy all the works of the devil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Emmanuel. And with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about, tell me, doing good and healing how many people? All people that were oppressed of the devil. Your oppression is cancelled. When you hear that final amen, healing has come. Amen. Deliverance has come. Amen. Miracle has come. Amen. The one who could make the virgin to conceive and then bring forth a child, what can he not do? All things he can do. Your life, all things he will do. You raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. When you hear the final amen, the works of the devil have been destroyed. Yeah. And you'll have that definite experience tonight that will save you from all infirmity, yeah. from all impossibility. Yeah. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Believe, like I believe here. I'm believing on your behalf. It shall be done. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord Jesus, remember you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. The healer with us. The deliverer with us. And the redeemer, deliverer with us. Lord, I pray right now, break every you. Yeah. Destroy the works of the devil. And Lord, I pray there will be a definite manifestation of the destruction of the works of the devil in every life here tonight, in Jesus' name. And all the locations where we are gathered together for this GCK, here in Nigeria, in Africa, beyond Africa, Lord, I pray, begin to walk in every life now and destroy all the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Insanity in the brain, I command you. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Madness, come out. Yeah. Lunacy, come out. Yeah. Brain derangement, come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Those blind eyes, I pray that mighty hand of Emmanuel will touch your blind eyes right now. Yeah. Open your blind eyes and see in Jesus' name. Yeah. Deaf ears, I command the deafness. Come out right now. Yeah. Dumb tongues, speak out right now. Yeah. And the goiter and the swelling and the elephantiasis be removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Cancer, I issue that word of authority and command. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. 
high blood pressure come to normal in Jesus name sugar in the blood diabetes be healed in Jesus name and all the sores in your body that refuse to be healed because of your bodily condition right now I pray those sores will dry up in Jesus name but I pray that every yoke is broken right now in Jesus' name. All the affliction that the devil has brought upon your life, I co command that affliction, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere now, here at the Alpha location, and every location where we're gathered together, looking up to you, Emmanuel, God with us, heal everyone destroy all the works of the devil set your people free let there be the shout of healing the joy of deliverance and the happiness of miracle in every life confirmation in every life demonstration of power in every life and i pray lord perform your word in every life right now the lame will rise up and walk the deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. The blind will have their eyes open. Miracle everywhere. Left, right, front, needle, at the back, online, television, radio, everywhere manifestation of healing miracle in jesus name thank you lord because i know it's done it is done it is done in jesus name i pray check up yourself there the miracle is there right now 